Well, here are the top six things that I'm always telling my sellers to maximize your proceeds out of selling your home and to get your house ready to sell. I couldn't keep it to three or four, I got six. The first thing is fix stuff. And when it comes to fixing stuff, the number one question I get anytime I walk into a seller's home and we're talking about selling it, is do I need to fix this? Do I need to fix this? Do I need to fix this? A lot of this, your realtor can help you with. Don't spend money on things that don't make sense. Call your realtor early. If you're looking in the Denver Metro market to interview agents, I would love the opportunity. I have a calendar link down below. You can pick a time, I'll come by, we'll talk about it. Because what I don't want sellers to do is waste money fixing things that don't make sense. Of the things that do make sense to fix that I recommend are Part A of that is major mechanical or functional system. Structure is a whole different video. I'm not really gonna go into that on this, but make sure the roof is good and has a few seasons left in it. Make sure the HVAC system works properly. Make sure the water heater works properly. Make sure your plumbing isn't leaking. Make sure your electrical breaker panel isn't tripping randomly. Anything like that that's just a major thing, I equate it to buying a used car, right? If you buy a used car, you expect it to work for a Decent period of time, six months, nine months, 12 months before you're spending a lot of money on it to fix something, even tires. I equate tires to like a roof. It's a wear item, but when you're buying the used car, you don't want bald tires, right? You wanna at least get some life out of it before you feel like you have to put a lot of money into it. Buyers are the same way. If not, you expect a deal, right? they're gonna expect one too. When you get into deal territory is when you cut into your proceeds. So these are those ROI items that make sense to spend money on first to keep you out of the buyers want a deal territory. The major mechanical systems, roof, plumbing, HVAC, water, all that kind of stuff. The second part of that is that handyman honeydew list. It's the broken switch plate. It's broken, it's not a big deal, it doesn't affect anything. No, but it looks bad. It looks worse than it is. It's a dollar, it's probably actually 25 cents. Put new switch plates on, like that one switch that's weird or doesn't work, that missing piece of baseboard, that door doesn't close quite all the way. All those little things add up. And I say buyers have a rule of threes when they go through a home. When it comes to repair items or necessary work, if they see one thing, okay, cool, it needs a thing, that's fine, houses need work. See a second thing, maybe that's a bigger thing, not sure what that's gonna cost, feeling a little uneasy. When they see the third thing, it's like the switch goes off of, the whole house needs work. Even if it's not true, once they see three or more things, it's ding, this house needs a lot of work. I want a deal to buy it, or I'm gonna buy something else instead that's easier. Because I'm already saving a lot of money for down payment, for closing costs. Oh, I feel a little stressed on the payment. I don't wanna feel like now I have to spend more money to do something, even if they have the money. Let's stay out of that rule of three territory and let's get the handyman honey-do list done. Um, create a list, like walk through the house and be like, oh yeah, just look at every single thing. You may not even see those things because you've been looking over them for so long. Have a friend come over, have grandma, grandpa, somebody that knows your house, maybe is familiar with it, but and ask them to look for things because they're gonna use those buyer eyes and they will see those things that somebody else may see that you've overlooked for so long that you don't even notice anymore. So that is number one. I know that's a long number one, but it's really important. Number two is the highest ROI item and the best use of time and money for anybody selling anything, not just their house, you're selling stuff on Marketplace, anything. Clean it. Nobody wants to buy your dirty, nasty stuff. Oh, it's so gross. Okay, clean your house, clean the nitty gritty corners, clean the backs of doors and bathrooms that probably have layers of hairspray that you don't really notice and see. Clean the mirrors, clean the windows, any sort of reflective, non-porous glass, see-through surface. If that is dirty, it will make everything feel dirty, even if it's really not. Clean your toilets, clean the window tracks. I'll link to a video of 10 things to clean when you're selling your home. Anyway, because I had just shown a bunch of houses that day and I was like, this is gross, this is gross, this is gross. Clean your home, it will be the best best time and the best ROI of anything else you can do, okay? If you need to get rid of smells, I'm a huge fan of Otoban. I think that stuff works amazing. I like the eucalyptus. It's just a personal preference because it smells fresh. It's not like lavendery or floral or it's very natural once it airs out. Wash your curtains. Your curtains carry a lot of smells that you don't realize, especially in like bathrooms or wet areas. You can throw those in the washing machine. If not, take them down, spray them with Otoban, put them out in the sun, let them air out. It will do wonders for your house. If you don't know if your house smells, call that neighbor or that friend and have them walk in the front door. As soon as they walk in the front door, they'll probably notice it and be like, hey, I need to know if my house smells and I live in it, so I don't know. So they will tell you if your house smells like pets. Nicotine smoke is a whole different issue. I'm not gonna get into that. Not in this video, because I don't have the time for it, but clean the house, get rid of the smells, get rid of the grit, clean the windows, clean the mirrors. 
that would be the best money and time you can spend on your home, possibly anything. Power washing outside, cleaning up the yard, clean. The cleaner it feels, the better it will feel that someone has taken care of the home and it will make people think you have maintained the home, even if you haven't, just because it's clean. Number three, paint. And I know this is a no brainer, but paint is the cheapest, fastest way to make an interior of a home feel fresh. Same for exterior, actually. I was meeting with a seller last week and they said, we can't really match the touch-up paint very well. Cool, bad touch-up looks worse than scuffs. <laughs> match the finish, okay? I'll put a link to understanding different finishes of paints because I can't tell you how many people will take a sample and get the color match, but the finish is different and they will put a flat touch-up on a semi-gloss wall or something and it looks terrible. It makes the house look so much worse because then it makes it feel like you did a bad fix-it job. And people are more worried about that than knowing what they need to fix. Fresh coat of paint. I am a huge fan of Sherwin-Williams Agreeable Gray. I have been for a very long time. I am not an interior designer. However, I have painted many homes that color. It is my go-to hands down. The only space it didn't really work in was a commercial space with a lot of odd lighting. But I am a huge fan of that. Spend some money on paint. Do it yourself if you want to save some money. If you need recommendation, recommendations of painters here in the Denver Metro Market, hit me up down below my contact information. I am passionate about paint. It is a great way to make a space feel new and fresh. Number four, flooring. This one's kind of loaded. I'll link to another video on LVP and what questions to ask your installer. I am a giant fan of LVP or luxury vinyl plank flooring. It is very durable for people with kids, with dogs. It has the solid flooring. It looks like wood. It looks and feels warm, but it's extremely durable. It's easy to clean. A lot of people don't like carpet because of pets, allergies, anything else. It's great for DIY installs if you want to try to do that. It's not terribly expensive to have installed. It is just a great option for a lot of people and has the highest ROI for any flooring that I recommend to be installed. So carpet in some places definitely makes sense. I'm a fan of carpet on stairs. I think LVP or solid flooring on stairs looks super modern, but I think it's not practical for a lot of people day to day. It also wears significantly more than the rest of flooring in the house because of what you're going up and down the stairs with. That's my little mini preach on flooring. Go check out the other video if you want, but updating your flooring or at least making sure it is clean and fresh and it will function for a period of time. So I made the recommendation to someone the other day that they actually replace their carpet with more carpet because we couldn't match the other flooring. It was gonna cost too much and carpet in the living room and in the bedroom spaces, a lot of people aren't opposed to. They like having the solid flooring in the high traffic areas. For those spaces, it made sense time-wise, budget-wise and for matching what's there and making it look new and fresh. And the carpet in there was beyond worn, right? The pad is worn down, it's rippled. It's not a stretch situation, it's not a clean situation. If your carpet is not that old, have it professionally cleaned and consider having it stretched if it is really good carpet or in really good shape. But making sure your flooring is not an item that people will feel like they need to put money into, don't make it one of those three things that's gonna take it down to investor territory but that is another thing where a realtor can make really good recommendations on what does make sense and what doesn't make sense. So you're not spending $30,000 on hardwood floors when your, your typical buyer is a family with kids and a dog or something like that. They're not going to want the hardwood because they know it's going to get destroyed. So let's use your money more wisely. Number five, lighting. I am passionate about light. I'm passionate about a lot of things, if y'all can't tell. However, I'll put a to a video on matching lighting. So the other recommendation I made to the seller was they have can lights that have CFL screw and bulbs. They also have hanging fixtures over their kitchen island, over the dining table, lamps in the living room, lamps in the bedroom. Put in color adjustable lighting. And I know that sounds dumb, but it is so affordable now, especially for recess light, like retrofits. I'll put a link to um, a couple down below, the ones that I really like, as well as the bulbs that I really like down below that have color adjustable because then you can match the color of the lighting. So like people are pretty familiar with now, like a bright white or a warm white or a daylight. I like to run in the 3,500K to 4,000K color spectrum. It works really well with that agreeable gray paint that I'm so obsessed with. But making sure your lighting color matches at the very least in the same room, ideally throughout the property, because if you have a really warm light in a lamp, but a really cool light overhead or in your recess lights or something like that, one, it will make your paint look different colors and people won't know why. It'll just feel weird. But the second thing is it will feel mismatched the house will feel hodgepodge. 99 times out of 100, people cannot tell what it is. And I will immediately say, guys, it's the color of the lighting. I'm a huge fan of getting not only the color of the lighting, 
but light fixtures. So I'll put another video um, down below on some of the top high ROI improvement items. And in there, I talk a lot about changing out your light fixtures, your chandeliers. Check out Bud's Market here in the Denver Metro or Restore or any other home resale, like home finishing resale type place. I have gotten chandeliers that should be four or 500 bucks for 40 or $50. Um, and even if you're spending $200 on a light fixture, if it is your main kitchen light fixture, chances are if it's updating you from something that's 30, 40, 50 years old, it is a very affordable way to update your space. So not only the color of lighting, but the light fixtures throughout the home. If you're doing fixtures and you are not a designer, <laughs> try to match the finishes. If you have brushed nickel or like a, a matte silver finish in a lot of things, try to match those finishes throughout the home. If you're a designer and you can mix and match a little bit more, cool, I don't have that skill set. I hire designers that do. But my rule is matching the finishes throughout, leading into plumbing fixtures, but matching your lighting fixtures throughout the home, it will make it feel cohesive, it will make it feel updated, and it is a good use of your money if you are looking to do some low investment, high ROI home improvements. Number six, this is that next level of, I'm really looking to update my home affordably and do some DIY stuff or have a handyman come out and not spend a ton of money, but I wanna get as much money as I can out of this property. And that is gonna be hardware and plumbing updates. And when I say plumbing, I mean your bathroom faucets, kitchen faucets. And when I say hardware, I mean your doorknobs, your door hinges, because it will make a house feel so much more modern. One, if it all matches. Two, it is relatively cheap and it is a DIY. I have a video on doing doorknobs, but doorknobs are super easy to do. If you're doing hinges, do one hinge at a time so you're not having to take the whole door off, right? Unless you're painting the doors and that's a different situation. But you can do one door at a time and not have to take the door off. I did an entire house of door hinges that way. Same for the doorknobs and the faucets for kitchens and bathrooms and things like that. Updating those things along with the lighting fixtures, like I mentioned before, vanity lighting in bathrooms, kitchen fixtures, hallway fixtures, so they're not builder grade. It's gonna feel semi-custom or a little bit more modern. It will make people feel like, oh, the house is updated. It's nice, it's fancy, I like it. Warm fuzzies, yay, let's buy it, right? And those are relatively low investment items that have a high ROI, at least double what you spent on it, if not more. And when done cohesively together throughout an entire property, not started and stopped, right? We're not just doing the kitchen off the bathrooms or something like that. But all of those things together are going to give 95% of my clients the best proceeds out of a property and are the best ROI and property prep investments when they're looking to sell their homes. Those are the recommendations that I make. So I have a playlist on staging you can check out. I'll link to my favorite places to buy staging items and what to get there. But hopefully that was helpful. If you are looking to do these improvements and you're in the Denver Metro market and you're considering selling your home, even if it's a couple years from now and you're wondering what to do and what makes sense, I meet with sellers all the time talking about these kinds of things reach out to me. You can grab an appointment right off my calendar, pick something that works for you and I'll come to your house. We'll take a look at it. Those detailed lists I do for signed clients. So I'm not going to give you the honey do list just so you can go hire your uncle Bob or your cousin or your nephew or whatever to sell your house. But I will make recommendations and for my sellers that hire me to help them sell and help them prep, they are always unbelievably appreciative of how well it works for them and how quickly it helps sell their home. So they're not wasting money on the wrong things. Anyway, feel free to grab a link off my calendar down below. If this was helpful or you liked it, hit the like button. That would really help other people see it. And if you're liking my videos, subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for the time. Best of luck selling.